Surprise. I don't think you were expecting this, huh? Yeah. I'm sure if you've clicked on this video that you've had streams that are blurry, pixelated, or maybe, you know, low quality. It's caused me to get into a deep dive of why, and I spent hours researching. It's a lot deeper than most people think. So today, I decided to show you why your streams may be looking blurry or pixelated. First, I'd like to put out there that this video isn't a magic bullet. It's not going to cure your stream's quality. As I said before, it's very complicated why it would be looking how it is right now. And not all the stuff that I mentioned in this video is going to fix that problem directly. Also, if you're TLDR or you really just want the short answer of why, I'll throw up a timestamp. Probably the first thing you should probably consider when it comes to streaming is your bitrate. Most videos talking about fixing your stream will generally talk about adjusting your bitrate. In some cases, this can be true. Maybe your bitrate is set wrong, but oftentimes bitrate is basically used as a straw man, and there is other underlying things that could be causing your stream to drop quality, but we'll discuss those later in this video. Bitrate is essentially how much data that you're pushing to your streaming provider. In this case, the lower your bitrate, the more low quality your stream will usually look. However, you can't just increase your bitrate to whatever you want because your internet now might be able to support that much bitrate. Because of that, we're going to need to test your connection speed. The best way to do this is with an app-based internet speed test. I don't recommend using browser-based speed tests as the ones I've seen. Most of them don't actually show your full bandwidth that you actually have. It's better to get something app-based. So I recommend getting Ookla's speed test app as it's basically on almost every device out there and it returns very reliable results. All you need to do is just launch the app, wait for it to connect to a server, then hit go on your screen. And after it's finished testing, you should see your download speed and your upload speed. And after it's finished testing, you should see your download speed and your upload speed. What's more important than is your upload speed. If you're observant, you may notice that yours or mine upload speed is significantly slower than your download. This is probably because your area does not have fiber optic yet, which means you'll have limited bandwidth. Your provider is opting to give you more download speed than upload speed because most people use their download speed more than their upload speed, as Download speed usually involves streaming uh, Netflix or downloading a game or basically just drowsing the web in general. <laughs> While uploading is usually mostly for if you're uploading a file or in this case you're streaming. Well, this means you can't push a higher bit rate while streaming. It should still be fine in most cases. Now, let's open OPS Studio and I'll show you how to properly put in your bit rate. Right, so the first thing you should be doing is making sure that your OBS is up to date. This is just to help eliminate any, you know, discrepancies you may have. Say like, I may be telling you to select this option and your version of OBS doesn't actually have that option since you're not on the latest version. So just make sure that you're up to date. It makes it a lot easier to translate this tutorial to you. After you update your OBS studio, go to your settings, then go to output and you want to input your bitrate into your streaming section. You'll see it in, titled in the box. Now, you want to make sure that the upload that you're putting in is a couple megabits below what you actually got for your upload test. The reason why you want to do this, it accounts for any fluctuations in your network speed or anyone else that's using your internet. This test, I'll be using eight megabytes you'll notice that the bitrate on OBS is set for kilobits per second and at megabits per second. While this may be confusing at first, do know that for every one megabit, it's equal to 1000 kilobits. So how I said earlier, if I want to stream at eight megabits, 
I would have to set the video bitrate at 8000 kilobits. However, even though your internet can support it, you shouldn't be putting in any bitrate. Let's say for example you have a 20 megabit upload speed. On YouTube, the maximum is 51 megabits that you can use for upload. However, if you're streaming on Twitch, your maximum upload speed is 6000 kilobits. If you try putting over 6000 kilobits, no one will be able to watch your stream, so thus no one will tune in. My recommendation is if you're streaming at 720p, you should be using about 4500 kilobits or 5000 kilobits for Twitch, or if you're on YouTube, I'd recommend going 6000 kilobits. If you're streaming 1080p, go 6000 kilobits for Twitch and 8 to 10k kilobits for YouTube. I'd also recommend changing your encoder if you have it set to software. The reason why is the software encoder is actually using your CPU, which does not do a good job at encoding video and sending it out for streaming. Instead, many modern GPUs have their own encoders dedicated to recording or streaming, which will help reduce the lag or low quality streams that you may having. They're called all different things on every single different platform, but I'll try to tell you all of them here. You can see on screen, since I was doing this on MacBook, for an Apple Silicon chip, you should be looking for Apple or Apple VT. For NVIDIA, it's usually called NVENC. And from what I know, AMD is called AMF, while Intel's ARC is called Hyper Encoder. Do note though, I don't have an AMD or ARC card, so I cannot confirm that that's true or not. If you don't have any of these options, then try looking for hardware. And if you don't have any of those, it's probably because the hardware you have does not support any sort of hardware encoding, or you might not have a dedicated graphics card on your system. Which means your streams might not even improve at all through this video. Okay, so now since you've properly set up your bitrate and you've changed your encoding to your hardware, let's talk about streaming protocols. Streaming protocols is often not really talked about in most discussions about streaming quality, and this is probably because most streaming platforms only support RTMP. This is also short for real-time messaging protocol. Yeah, the reason why most websites use it is it's totally up-to-date and on par with modern technology. No! Yeah, this standard was introduced over 20 years ago. It's crazy how many technologies we use out a day that's pretty outdated. Not only that, but it wasn't even originally designed for video streaming. It was originally meant to stream assets for Flash Player. Because of how outdated RTMP is, it's Handling for fast moving videos such as video games at HD is pretty bad. However, there is a newer protocol. This protocol is called HLS or HTTPS live streaming. This is a protocol that basically most streaming platforms use to stream the videos to you. YouTube, smartly enough, allows you to use this protocol for live streaming. It also supports HEVC, a more efficient video encoder than H.264. Also, it's good to note, Twitch does not support HLS or HEV. So, if you're considering wanting very high quality streams because maybe you're streaming games, it might be good to looking into YouTube. I've noticed when running my tests, HLS does seem to help with movement. For example, the compression around the UI seemed to be handled a lot better with HLS than RTMP. However, this was only really noticeable streaming at 1080p. 720p seems to just basically look the same no matter if you're using HLS or RTMP. So keep that in mind if you are streaming at 720p. However, I noticed if I used a capture card, especially like the one I have where it's lower end, thus it has a lot of compression in the video, quality does drop. And I can show you right here, I mean, this is HLS and this is also RTMP. They look the same. Also know that HLS comes at the disadvantage of having a lot of latency. So let's say for example you're streaming like VRC or only having a webcam where you have static backgrounds and you know you really need to interact with your audience a lot. RTMP is a lot better option and it looks perfectly fine. So if you want to set YouTube to use HLS all you have to do is open your stream manager and then you're gonna have to create a new stream key. 
then you just select HLS for your protocol. After that, you need to open OBS, and then you'll see in OBS, you'll see more providers. You open that, and then it'll show you a list of all, every single provider and streamer out there. You go down to YouTube, and there should be an option for YouTube HLS. You select that, then you put input your new streaming key into the box, and you should be all set. So here's a wrap of everything we've talked about in this video. One factor in streaming is called your bitrate. If you have too low of a bitrate, your streams are pixelated and blurry. Too high and your internet might not be able to handle it. You can always check how high of a bitrate your internet can handle by using an internet speed test. Just make sure you set your bitrate if you make a bit below what your results are so your internet will have room to fluctuate in its connection speed. Also note that on Twitch, your max bitrate is 6,000 kilobits per second and on YouTube, it's 51,000 kilobits per second. The protocol that you use determines the quality of your stream. YouTube supports HLS and RTMP, while Twitch only supports RTMP. YouTube also supports HEVC, a more efficient encoder than the standard H.264 encoder. HLS works best for high motion streams like fast paced games or moving cameras. This is at the cost of higher latency, however while well, RTM is a lot better for webcam and stationary camera streams, where backgrounds are usually static and you require lower latency in order to interact with your audience that you're talking to. It will help you improve the quality of your streams. If you have any more tips that you want to share or you want to leave your gratitude, please leave a comment down below. Anyways, with that, I gotta head out, so I'll see you guys sometime later. Right? Cool. I'll take off then. See ya. Oh, okay. Nope, that's... That's a wall. Just, just cut the camera.